Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you were just singing that song. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord the most? Okay. There are many a times we sing songs and we do not understand what exactly happens. The Bible says when you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. In the Bible, God has got different names and based on those names, he begins to perform. So when I call Jesus, you are my healer, what will he do? Come on. He'll heal me. Lord, you are my savior. What will he do? Lord, you are my protector. Lord, you are my provider. Lord, you are my deliverer. Lord, you are the most high God. Okay, I want you to write that uh, seven points. When I call God the Most High, seven things begin to happen in the spiritual realm according to Psalms chapter 1, uh, chapter nine, uh, 57, verse 1, 2, and 3. Can you put that Psalms 57, 1, 2, and 3? See, when you are singing that song and you're singing the Most High God, the moment you said that, seven things instantly begins to happen in the spiritual realm. The first one, the first one, God performs on my behalf. God, listen baby, you can look into that notes and say, but if it's not in your heart, you don't receive anything. It's one of the short prayer by which you can activate the spiritual realm and turn everything around in your side. So when you're singing that song, please understand what's happening in the spiritual realm. First one, that he performs on my behalf. Two, he brings his plans in my life. He brings his plans in my life. Three, he brings his plans to completion in my life. He brings his plans to completion in my life. Four, he rewards me. Four, he rewards me. Five, he sends help from heaven. How many of you want help from heaven? All of us. So when you call him by that name, help is on the way from heaven. Six, he saves me from slanderers and reproaches. From the beginning? Which one? He saves me, he sends help from heaven. He sends help from heaven. He saves me from slanderer and reproacher. Put the third verse. He sends forth his mercy, his truth. His mercy, his truth, his blessings follow me all the days of my life. His mercy, his truth, his blessings follow me all the days of my life. Praise the Lord. So now when you are singing that song, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Then? So the moment you said the most, I look at verse number one, what it says. Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusts in you. Yes, in the shadow of your wings will I make my refuge until this calamity is be overpassed. 
the first thing that he begins to perform on your behalf is he spreads his wings and takes you under his wings of protection when you call him by that name the most high god that's why verse number two says i cry unto god haha <laughs> i cry unto god i cry unto god i cry unto god he gets into action now you might sing the same words and not understand and get nothing but when you understand when i speak these words god has given me his word that when i cry out to him with these words he says he will surely perform on my behalf do you want some things which is not possible for human beings to do there are certain situations that looks to be impossible and you want God to intervene in those situations and perform on your behalf. What will you call him? What will you call him? The Most High God. Because these things cannot be performed by any person in this world. The only person who can do that is God. For a person suffering from cancer, the last stage no medical assistance can save his life and that person keeps calling out to god you are the most high god lord no one can change this situation it's already declared it's over the game is over but when i call you by that name lord you will begin to perform on my behalf amen amen, amen. amen. which one is better that god brings his plans in my life or I bring, I, I, I make my plans and tell God, please fulfill it. So when you keep calling out to God and by that name, he gives you an assurance that he will bring his plans in your life. And not only he will bring his plans in your life, he will bring those plans to completion. I want to tell you, it's a very short prayer. Jesus, you are the most high God. 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 And when I say this, this line, Jesus, you are the most high God, I understand according to the word of God that these are the things that God has promised for me. Are you following? Let me show you something. Isn't the Bible wonderful when you understand the truth? You know, you know, yesterday when this brother was playing with the snake, he was actually playing with the snake. The snake is poisonous. And I asked him, what about your, anybody among your friends who are also in the service of catching the snakes? You all are snake rescuers. Uh, has it ever happened that the snake bit anybody? And he said, there are sometimes uh, people who are in a team get bitten with a snake and some of the snakes are so poisonous, you get only 15 minutes before you can take the antidote. And if you couldn't take that, the person is dead. So they are actually playing with life and death. One wrong error and the person is dead. But I said, how can you still be so confident? He says, when I learn the technique, I can captivate it all the time. And that's what I was seeing. He would take the stick under the belly and keep on picking it up. And I said, how long do you do that? He said, the moment I pick it up in the air, it finds itself powerless. And when I keep on doing it, keep on doing it, there comes a time the snake gets so confused that he gives up. That's the time when he gives up, we now catch him by the tail. Not when he is aggressive. In the same way, any situation coming against you the devil wants you to play the game in your sense knowledge and when you're playing in the game in the sense knowledge he can bite you he can destroy you but if he is playing on the sense knowledge and you're playing on the word of god again and again and again he begins to get fed up because the word of god is the sword of the spirit you are actually tormenting the devil with the word of god That's why a Christian, a child of God, has to know the word of God. You know, when we, when we write, when we go for any government uh, certificate, they will, uh, there will be a sentence there, what's your mother tongue? There, there will be a, 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 a point there, mother tongue. Have you noticed? 
What about we fathers, men? And I was asking God, why God always mother tongue? We fathers have got no other job. We, we have not done anything. And no father's tongue. He said, listen, son, there are only two fathers in this world. One is the father of heaven and the one is the father of darkness. And the Lord said, when you are my child, you will learn my language and you will speak my language. And that's the proof that you are my child. How do I sp speak God's language? The word of God is God's language. And when I learn this language and I speak his language, I am now talking the father's tongue in my mother's tongue called English. <laughs> ask your friend, do you love Jesus? And he says, yes. Then you ask the person beside you, do you speak the language of heaven or the language of the world? Because if you are saying, I belong to God and you don't know his language, there is something wrong with you. Then somebody will say, you mean to say, when you, you, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you learnt it just like that? No, no, no. When the Holy Spirit comes, He is your helper. He will not give you, but He will teach you. And He will say, you labor, I will give you the strength to labor. You take your time out with me, and I will help you to learn it by heart. Hallelujah. So are we supposed to speak the Father's tongue of heaven or the Father's tongue of the world? And if I'm supposed to speak the father's tongue of heaven, I need to learn it by heart. And you can speak in any mother tongue. It doesn't matter. You can speak in Tamil. You can speak in Telugu. You can speak in Kannada. You can speak in Hindi. You can speak in Marathi. You can speak in Konkani. But see that you speak the father's tongue of heaven and not of this world. Why is it that when I come, you get so quiet, man? The next time I'm coming to preach, I'm coming with a guitar. Because when, you, when those youngsters come with guitar, you are once more, once more, once more. When I come to preach, they say, no more, no more, no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm coming to teach you the father's tongue of heaven because when the devil shows up and you know the father's tongue, he knows where he belongs. He has to go because if God is the most high God, not if God is the most high God, then the devil is the most low God of this world who is under our feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But look at that same person. He has the bottle. He has the stick. And he has the snake. He gives all those things to you. And he says, come on, go ahead and catch the snake. Now, is it possible? Unless you learn the technique. That's why you can come to the retreat, have a lot of praise and worship and dance and everything. But when you leave the gate, your problems are still the same. And if you don't learn the technique, how to make the devil fed up with the truth that comes from the word of God. The devil will kiss you all the time. And every time he kisses, he leaves a mark. He leaves his venom. He tortures you, torments you day and night. And your life is miserable. Hallelujah. Give me 2 Peter. Chapter 1, verse 2. Grace. Say that, grace. grace. Please say that again. Grace. Say that again. Grace. A person can only understand grace who has failed in his exam. He has failed in his exam and he needs just five marks. Just five marks. And he goes to the teacher and says, I need just five marks, teacher. And the teacher looks at him, filled with love and compassion, gives the student five marks, and the child gets promoted to the next level. And there's another student. He needs just one mark to get into distinction. And he goes to the teacher and says, give me just one mark. Just one mark. That one mark, I will get distinction. 
and the same teacher says, no. Grace is always given to those who have failed. And grace is given in such a way that the person who has failed, when grace is given, the person who is disqualified is now made qualified by the person who has given grace and promoted to the next level. I don't know about you, but I know about myself. The life that I lived, I was well qualified to go to hell. Because the kind of life that I lived qualified me without a question asked that you deserve to be punished and go to hell. But praise be to God, Lord Jesus Christ, who took my place on the cross, became my substitute, shed his blood and died for me, that he played the prize on the cross and he has set me free. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tomorrow we will study on how Jesus' death can set me free. Praise God. Tomorrow we will study that. So it, the grace is given only to those who are disqualified. Is there any person over here who has not committed sin in his life? And if you have not committed sin in, this, in your life, you are in the wrong place because this is a place for broken people, shattered people, messed up people, uh, totally gone kissed people, totally in bondage, in captivity, in addiction. Because this is the place where God shows his mercy and gives his grace and qualifies his children from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If the devil is going on telling you, hey, you did a mess, you did a mess, you did a mess. You tell the devil, yes, I did a mess. But now I know Jesus and he paid the price for me and he has shed his blood and by his blood my sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. And because of his bloodshed sacrifice on the cross grace has opened up for me and this grace is given to everyone who believes in Jesus you mean to say eh, brother when you lay hands on the sick and they get healed it's not you and eh, not at all it's the grace of God I deserve to be crucified on that cross. When Jesus got hung on that cross, that cross was mine. But Jesus took my place on that cross and he took my place. And he has given me grace. Hallelujah. And that's what he says. Grace and peace. There are many of us who are seated here who is saying, there is no peace in my life. My friend, peace doesn't come when things are in your favor. Peace doesn't come when everything is goody-goody. Peace of Christ does not depend on circumstances. Peace of Christ depends on the kind of mindset that I'm thinking in my mind. And that's what he says. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, he's saying... Let me give you an example. Paul and Silas have been beaten up and they have been put in the prison and they have been beaten up with rods. Uh, people from Bombay can understand what I'm saying. If a pickpocketer is caught in a, in a, in a local train in Bombay and he is caught, uh, you can imagine what will be his condition before he reaches the three stations. The person will be pleading, crying and saying, hand me over to the police. Because people will be hammering him in such a way that his bones will be broken. And if he's in the Wasai or Virat train, he might be thrown out of the running train. And that was the condition of Paul and Silas. They cast out the demon of a slave girl. And now their business is gone. And, and the masters of that girl were very angry. And they got the mob together and hammered Paul and Silas with rods. With rods with rods 
and got them into the prison. Now, if they are in the prison, are they supposed to be joyful? Are they supposed to be having peace? Are they supposed to be people who are praising God? But that's what we find. Paul and Silas, the Bible says at midnight, were praising God so loudly that the prisoners on the other side were listening to their loud praises. How can a person who has been beaten up, bleeding and in pain, praise God? He should have said, God, I cast out the demon in your name. I preached the gospel for you. I did all this for you and you never protected me. Their circumstances did not stop them from praising God. You know why? They were so excited. They were extremely excited and they said, Hey, hey we are in the prison. Death is close at hand. Come on, death. Go ahead and kill me quickly. You can kill my body. You can't kill my soul. You can't kill my spirit. The moment you kill me, I've been longing to meet my Lord. I've never seen in him in my life. I've only heard his preaching. I've only heard the gospel. But I've never seen Jesus in my life. Yes, I saw a vision of Jesus on the way to Damascus. But I've not seen my Jesus. And if you kill me, go ahead and kill me. I will be with my Lord very quickly. Now, was their mind set on circumstances or their mind was set on meeting Jesus quickly? Huh? And they were also rejoicing, if you don't kill me, I can still preach and praise the Lord. And the prisoners who are listening on the other side are preaching the gospel and thank God I'm in the prison, now I can preach to those prisoners. Like the brother said, when he gave me the, the letter and said, go to the prison and preach, I started crying and crying and crying. Because I, I always wanted to go into the prison and preach. Believe me, sometimes when there is a lati charge on the road, I have stood before the cop that they can arrest me and put me in the prison so that I can be there inside for some days and preach the gospel and get somebody the salvation because they need somebody to go in the prison and preach the gospel and save those souls, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then this same brother, uh, we had a three days living retreat for them. By default, they have to have a living retreat. They can't come out. Praise God. And we had a three days retreat. And I was preaching on tongues for them. And there were uh, people of different nationality in the prison. And, and, and we began to praise God. And we started saying, God, let your Holy Spirit come into this place. And we were praising God so loudly. And when this officer, this brother, walked into that room where we were praising God, he looked at those people who are non-Christians, vibrating under the anointing and preaching and, 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 and praising God in tongues. Life began to change. Revenge began to go. And they have a desire now to be good people. Hallelujah. Because one officer on the top list is a Christian who gave us a permission to go to that prison and preach the gospel of Christ. My friend, when you have a desire to burn for the Lord, yesterday I said one prayer, Lord, dip me in the kerosene of your spirit, Lord, and set me on fire that I will live for you, Jesus. Grace and peace comes through the knowledge of God. When for some time the current goes off, peace is broken into pieces. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I surrender all. 
I want you to know you more. And he's, the Lord is saying, okay, the current is gone. Now let's talk. But now there's grumbling. I want to know you more. When will you know God more? Not when everything is goody goody. You will really come to know God is more intimate when everything is coming against you and your mind is set on the word of God. That's when you have peace. That's when you have joy. That's when the grace of God begins to manifest his glory. The problem is we preachers have messed up the Christians. You know why? Because we preachers like to preach on faith, on healing, on anointing, on blessing. The church is full. And if the preacher comes and starts preaching on persecution, he begins to preach on, on, on sacrifice. He begins to preach on unjust suffering. He begins to preach that you've got to learn to die to your flesh. Nobody wants to come and listen to those messages. Keep the preacher out of the, out of the city. Because we want, to pre, we want to listen only one side of the coin. The second side of the coin is the birthright of every Christian. If you want to really build up your, your relationship with God, get excited when things go bad in your life. Not because you are the cause. But they are coming against you. Now is the time to practice what we learn theory and God will teach you practical. Amen. Look at the third verse. Please fasten your belt. This is my favorite scripture. Please read it. His divine. His. 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 What is that divine power? That divine power is the grace of God. And this grace of God is given to everybody absolutely free. His divine power will give, will give, will give, will give, will give, will give. Has given what? Has given unto some has given unto some, has given unto us all, what? What? Some things. Some things. Some things. All things that pertains unto life and godliness. Let me ask you a question. Supposing your dad decided to deposit 10 lakhs rupees in your account. He took 10 lakhs of his money and deposited in your account. The moment he deposited that money in your account, after a month he needed the money, so he went to the bank and spoke to the bankers that I deposited my money in my child's account. I want two lakhs from that account. Will the bank give him that two lakhs? Huh? Huh? Why not? Why not? Hello, why not? Hello, why not? Because even though the money was yours, the moment it was deposited in your child's account or in your account, now it's become your money and until you sign the check, the money is not coming out. In the same way God the Father is saying, I love you so much that everything that you will need to live a Christian life, a life of sacrifice, a life of evangelism, a life to reach out, a life of missionary, whatever life for Christ, whatever you are living, everything that you will ever need in your life, I have already deposited in your account. that has it deposited in your account come on and if he has deposited in your account 
How are you asking him? God, give me, give me, give me. He's saying, I cannot because I've deposited in your account. I know somebody screaming on top of their voice. They are saying, but didn't Jesus say, ask and you shall receive? And you are saying, I cannot go and ask God because it's deposited in my account. How can two scriptures be opposite to each other? Okay, let me give you an example. The wife went to the laundry and she took four of a beautiful dress and gave it for dry cleaning and ironing. Praise God. What would the laundry man give her in exchange of clothes? Money. Very good. In Goa, they give you money. Praise God. Apna Bombay mein kya deta hai, Linton bhai? Goa mein paisa deta yaar. Huh? What will they give? Receipt. Now, the person says delivery after five days. So the wife goes to the husband and says, Listen, darling, today I have to go and get those clothes, but I'm a little busy. You are always so caring for me. Let me give you a hug. Okay, now, here is the receipt. Please get the clothes when you're coming from office. And like all the husbands, praise God. No problem, darling, anything for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anything you say, darling, for you. Praise God. So from the office is going to the laundry. And he goes there and he says to the man, Can you give those four dresses of my wife? So that man says, who is your wife? That one, very fair, very beautiful. She puts that red color lipstick. She gets that dimple over here. And she's very, very chickeny. <laughs> Praise God. And she has got a little bluish eyes. And that man says, listen, in this place, there are many beautiful ladies coming here. How will I know? And then I have to get my wife's clothes from that man. So I am. Please give me my wife's clothes. Will he give me? Now he will give me. Please give me my wife's clothes. Now he'll give me. <laughs> now he'll give me. Huh? What will he ask? So when I take open my purse and I give the receipt, am I still asking? Am I not asking? Demanding? Come on, am I not demanding what's mine? I'm not demanding something that's not mine. I'm demanding what's mine. In the same way, Jesus is saying, ask and you shall receive. He's saying, when you come to my father, don't come without a receipt. That's the promise of God. Come with the receipt and talk to my father. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. If you don't know how to clap, the sound system knows how to clap. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! God is looking for His children to be believers and trusting in Him. He is not looking for beggars. My God is not looking for beggars. He's looking at his children and saying, 
can you trust me and if you are trusting me please come with the receipt ask your neighbor have you got the receipt <laughs> ask and you shall receive what did you tell him peter what did you tell him ah huh? where's the receipt the bible is the receipt praise god because he always gets his wife's clothes from the laundry that's why he's saying that's why he said i told you the kind merciful gentle loving passionate husband praise god hallelujah then he says seek and you shall find what do you seek not the blessings seek the lord when you seek the lord you seek his word you seek his promises and you shall find you will search and search and search and search and when you find the promises he says knock have you heard that knock hello knock hey knock hey knock okay okay we are in the intercession team and some petition has come so i am talking to the intercession team let's get ready let's knock the doors of heaven let's storm heaven man anybody there to storm heaven so we are praying now father we are storming the heavens the petition has come and you are now storming the heavens and god the father was sitting on the throne is saying why is everything shaking michael what's happening what to say god the people in goa are storming the heavens there is an attack on the heavens why they have got a petition and they are shaking the heavens so god says okay before they shake us too much saint michael answer that prayer quickly <laughs> now masia you got four children now all the four children went to school and they are hungry and you are at home so are they knocking at the door of the kitchen mama 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 and when they are going on knocking at the door now you are seeing okay let me serve you food do you do that before they can knock you are already waiting for your children already prepared and when they are coming darling come sit sit is it right then how do you think that god wants you to knock and knock and knock and jesus said knock and the door will be open you know what jesus said when you come with the receipt you get the answer and if you don't have the receipt go and search it in the bible you will get the receipt and when you get the receipt remember the devil is not going to keep quiet when you get the receipt he is going to put such pressure on you that he is going to build the walls to stop you from going and taking your inheritance that's when jesus says knock the wall and get in it shall be open <laughs> hallelujah anybody wants to storm the heaven now you don't need to storm the heaven you need need to storm that unbelief those walls that are built by the devil stopping you from receiving your inheritance amen, amen. hallelujah 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 praise the lord i had come to preach on the power of praise that one song changed the whole topic 
the most high god okay how do you get how do you get everything uh, listen listen if god says all these things are deposited in your account are you happy come on are you happy i was not because i said lord if it's deposited in my account and if you don't teach me how to get it out of my account from the spiritual to the natural what's the use lord i will die in wishful thinking i want to see it manifested praise god hallelujah look what he says according as his divine power that is grace listen listen this deposit is not because you fasted for 40 days listen this deposit is not because you are praying day and night this deposit is because he loves you and this deposit has come in your account only because of love and that love is called grace of god <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah i can't see anything now praise god somebody saying your time is up okay the deposit is in your account you don't know how to get it out your problem all this time you were saying no more no more now when the time came to withdraw from the deposit you want more Hallelujah. Aya yeah, somebody said tomorrow you can preach. Okay. According as as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness. How do I get it? Through 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 So where do I get the knowledge of God? Through the Bible. That He has called us to He has called us to He has called us to What is glory? What is glory? He has called us to So what is glory? Okay. Let's say have, have, have we ever seen Jesus? No. Have we seen the Holy Spirit? no but let's say a person is sitting here and the praise is, praise and worship is going on and all of a sudden he starts screaming i can see i can see i can see now what's that glory so what is glory i cannot see god with my natural eyes but i can see his works with my natural eyes and when those works begins to manifest right before my eyes it's called glory yesterday night we saw this afternoon we saw tonight we are going to see and god has called you for what is the meaning when i am filled with grace and i know the deposit that god has put in my account and i now know it wherever i go i will see god's glory means what i cannot see the holy spirit but when i touch people i can see the holy spirit whom i cannot see do things which are supernatural and that's called god's glory and god has called you for 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 glory. So when you see a person all the time addicted going in for drugs and alcohol and all those things and now the same person is getting those people to church and cleaning them up and giving them the gospel that's God's glory <laughs> Hallelujah So when you see some people who were never coming to church they were always outside and even if they would come they would sit outside because on the outside you can see I I I come from the IC church and 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 we got a cemetery and there is a nice platform and everybody will be sitting for mass outside and many will be coming and sitting 
and then they will be pulling. Because when they come there, they realize that it is short. Then they will pull. And it's not becoming long. But the whole time they will be pulling. Praise God. And we always like to be seated there because all the cuts. Now, yesterday when the first day my pant was torn, they said, brother, your pant is torn. But when a lady has got everything torn, it's the style. Come on. And I used to be there and my wife used to say, come inside. And I should say, listen, if I come inside, I will take a place. Somebody else can sit there. And I would be there watching outside because all the latest styles you can see outside. <laughs> so people who knew me in the past, they knew me that this person is a gone case. He is a hopeless case. Nothing can be done. And some of them even advised my wife, a, a, a dog tail which is bent. You put it in a nully, in a pipe, for 10 years, remove the pipe, the tail will be? And that's what they told about me, but now they can see God's... Ha ha ha! Woo! So just because your child is not going to church doesn't mean that your child has got, God has got no purpose in his life. Might be your child is in Egypt standing outside. He's learning all the things of the Egyptian, but a time is coming. My God is bringing him out of Egypt to the promised land. Yay! Woo! Hallelujah! And, and, and the day he brings him out of Egypt to the promised land. And now when he sees the Egyptian, he says, I've been there. I've been there. And I know how to get cleaned up. If you can come with me, I will introduce to you to my Jesus who cleaned me and filled me with his glory. That now wherever I go, I see the supernatural hand of God on me. And the same God will do it for you. Because in God's kingdom, there is no partiality. I might look like an Egyptian. Because that was the time when I was in sin. But when he cleansed me up, it's God's glory. He has called me for glory. My life is a life of glory. God's glory. God's virtue. Hallelujah. And that's why God has called you for. God has not called you for a namesake Christian when you open your mouth and nothing happens. He has called you when the son of God, when you, a daughter of God and a son of God, opens your mouth and starts speaking. Heavens opens up and bears witness that you are a child of God because God confirms the word with accompanying signs and wonders that is being preached in the name of Jesus. Do you know why people don't believe? Because many preachers preach and they don't believe what they preach. But when you see the word of God, God gives you an assurance. Whenever the Bible is opened and preach, my God will always show up his glory when the word of God is preached. And that's your inheritance, my friend. You don't have to sweat for it. You need to believe it. You need to have a relationship with God where you're believing that God, this is what you said, this is what I believe, and this is what I'm going to live for you. Hallelujah. Did you get now the deposit? Shall we study next, next retreat how to withdraw the deposit? You're not hungry? You want to know how to remove, how to get the deposit out? And that's why yesterday, yesterday I said all of you are going to speak in tongues and there were so many who were speaking in tongues. How did I do that? I, I, I was rooming from the deposit. Look at the fourth verse. It shows you how to get the deposit out. Verse number four. Whereby, whereby are, 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 Listen, when you look into the Bible, every promise of God is in a past tense. The problem is we don't believe 
what God has said because we believe what we can see with our sense knowledge and that's why our prayer is always in the future tense. Listen, when Jesus said it is finished, he finished everything that God had to do in our life. It is finished. Now all that we have to do is learn how to withdraw from the deposit that God has put in our life. So, whereby are given unto us what? Exceeding great and precious promises that by these promises you might be, that you might be, that you might be partaker of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, now, why did God give you these promises? So that through these promises you can withdraw the deposit. Now, how many of us use the word of God to get our prayers answered? Everybody, everybody. But the Lord says, I have given you the promises, not that you will get blessed. I have given you the promises, first of all, that by these promises, you shall be a part taker of his divine nature in other words i use the word of god not to get blessed but i use the word of god to become more and more like him the exceeding and great promises of god are given so that we might be partaker of his divine nature that these promises, when I use it every day in my life, it will change my nature and make my nature more and more like Jesus. A compassion, a kind, a loving, a forgiving, a reaching out. But we want the promises. Brother, I got some sickness in my body. Can you give me the promises? For what? To get healed. Our relationship with God is a dhanda. I want to have a relationship with you, but you got to heal me first. The foundation of our relationship is wrong. The foundation of the relationship that God is speaking to you is, use my promises first of all to change your nature. And the more and more your nature begins to change, those blessings will come chasing you. I don't know about you, but in Bangalore and some cities, you must have read, uh, you must have seen the advertisement, buy one, take one free. In Goa it is there. Buy one and take one free. It's not there? Hello, have you, have you read that ad? Buy one, take one free. Buy one shirt and take one shirt free. Is it there? Now you go to the shop and tell that shopkeeper, hey, listen, give me what's free. Give me what's free. What will he say? He'll show you the door. He'll say, first buy one, take one free. And that's what we are doing to God. God, give me what's free. He's saying, no, 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 no. Use my word and change your nature. And when your nature begins to change, you don't even have to pray for blessing. They will come to you free. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody can sing with that tune. I knew it. Praise God. That's why I like the hallelujah. Because hallelujah, you can sing in any tune you want. But that's the only word that has got no fixed tuning, man. Hallelujah. And he says, the more and more you develop the divine nature of God in you, by default, you shall escape from every corruption that is coming against you. Whether it's sickness, disease, whether it's your marriage, your relationship, your finances, whatsoever is coming against you, you shall be able to escape. When your focus is not the escape, 
but your focus is, I want to be more and more like Jesus by obeying the word of God. Now you will find everything that you need in life will now begin to manifest in your life. And when they begin to manifest, all that comes out from you when you're alone worshiping God, God, I don't deserve this, Lord. How come you're blessing me so much? And that's the truth. We use the word of God so that I can get some blessing. Uh -huh. We use the word of God so that we become more like Jesus. And the more and more you become like Jesus, the more and more you are a blessing to others. When you are more and more a blessing to others, don't worry about yourself. Blessing will come in search of you. It will knock you down. It will overthrow you. It will overpower you. The blessings of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. And let's thank God for this truth. He's the most high God. And he's saying to you, my child, no matter wherever you are, in whichever family you have been born, whatever your situation, everything that you need in life has been provided to you. And an excellent example would be today, the testimony of Father Salvador. Everything that he needed in life was deposited in his account. And we see in his own lifestyle that all that he was doing was seeking God. And the more and more he began to seek God, he did not even have to go and search or beg for money or any of the resources. They just began to come into his life by default. Strangers came into his life and began to bless him. And all the blessing that he received, today is a blessing to people all around. My friend, the true nature of Christ is selflessness. And that selflessness can come when we begin to learn to die to our flesh. When we begin to learn to put the word of God into practice day and night. When we are all the time vigilant resisting the devil and when we resist the devil he will flee from us resisting every thought that is contradicting to God's word and if we are able to do that every day using the word of God the more and more we shall be able to operate in love we shall be able to operate in forgiveness we shall be able to operate in giving life to others and when this becomes a lifestyle, my friend, you shall escape from every corruption that is in the world through lust. But if you give in to the desires and the cravings of this world, even though God has got such great plans in your life and the deposit is in your account, you will never, never, ever be able to withdraw the deposit from your account. This deposit begins to be active where there is love and forgiveness. The moment you are in strife, the moment you are in offense, the moment you have got the negative attitudes and bitterness in your life, all the good things that God has deposited in your account will remain in your account. You will never ever be able to enjoy it. And it will not only affect you, it affects your generations. So let us make this commitment to the Lord. And tell him, Jesus, thank you that you love me so much that you have already deposited. My top priority from now on, O oh Lord, is not how much can I get blessed, but my top priority from now on, O oh Lord, is how much can I practice the word of God? How much can I practice one-sided love, selfless love, unconditional love, reaching out to others' love, not expecting anything for my benefits but reaching out day and night serving you O oh Lord because you said when I touch the least of my brothers I've touched you 
I've served you. Lord, there are so many people suffering all around. And there are opportunities after opportunities for me to go and be a blessing to them. And when I do that, O oh Lord, I will see your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Spirit of God, this message that has been proclaimed is your incorruptible seed planted in the heart of every child. In the name of Jesus, I pray that this seed shall not be stolen by the enemy. This seed shall surely bring forth the harvest, a complete transformation of life and a great destination in the future in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.